At the end of World War II, General Dwight D. Eisenhower went to visit several of the liberated concentration camps, observing the horrors caused by the Nazis. Of course, he was followed by a press corps. And during one of the tours, Eisenhower stops, addresses the press. There will come a time when people will deny these atrocities ever occurred. You will use your reporting as proof that they indeed happen. Please snap pictures liberally and please record the graphic details with your pencils. Eisenhower was right. There are far too many people in the world 80 years later in this country as well who question and deny the Shoah, the Holocaust. We are witnessing the rise of anti-Semitism. The ADL has reported more than 2,100 separate incidents of anti-Semitism in 2020 alone. And we know about the rise of hatred towards Asians and other minority groups. I believe it is a mitzvah, a commandment to do what we can to end hate. As Emil Fackenheim taught, fighting hate and assuring never again is the 614th commandment. So with that in mind, I invite Temple Israel and the Great Neck Chinese Association and other local organizations at a community rally against hate, Sunday, April 25th at 12.30 p.m. at ILP Grace Avenue Park. But today, as we get ready to celebrate Israel, I want to discuss a corollary to that command to fight hatred. We need to embrace diversity as being positive to human culture. We need to support and preserve our various different cultures because the mosaic that we create is a beautiful thing that enriches our lives, enriches the planet. The other day I was in conversation with Nathan Fong, who was the president of the GNCA and also part of the United Parent Teacher Council. He was sharing plans with Avi and me about a team created COVID time capsule. The purpose of this capsule was to give teens the opportunity to reflect on this most different and disruptive year. We will store the capsule for 12 years and time to be read by the present kindergarten class as they prepare to graduate high school. As is natural, we emotionally checked in with each other, Nathan and I. Nathan said he was feeling quite optimistic. He closely monitors the global vaccine data and excitedly pointed out to me, the rabbi, that Israel is demonstrating that vaccines are God willing our ticket out of this pandemic footing. Nathan also beamed with pride that noting that many of the people behind the vaccine development were immigrants, all sharing and cooperating, making the impossible possible. Nourishing cultures together is what makes us diverse and what makes us do the miraculous. And Jewish culture is no exception. We must preserve our heritage. And the way to do that is with a strong state of Israel. There is no doubt that Jewish, Jewish culture thrived for 2,000 years in diaspora. But everywhere we landed, anti-Semitism would rear its ugly head time and again. And when the Shoah hit, we realized enough was enough. Jews needed their homeland back as a sanctuary and a place to build a thriving new culture. The world reluctantly gave us Jews an opportunity for a state in 1948, and we took it full steam, and literally with blood, sweat, and tears, Israel has thrived in its mission as a Jewish sanctuary and as a place for thriving Jewish culture. Over these 73 years, Israel became home to millions of Arabs, of Jews from Arab lands, millions of Russian and European Jews. And just last month, Israel completed its final airlift of Ethiopian Jews 
out of harm's way. I'm going to make the assumption that many of us know about Israel's witch culture. I don't need to share all of those um, statistics, but we know that the music and the art and the intellectual knowledge and the scientific knowledge that comes out of this tiny little country is beyond its numbers. And we know about Israel's achievements in battling COVID-19. Israel is far from perfect. The Cold War struggle with the Palestinians, as I call it, is real and cannot be ignored. Israel is working toward the ideals where minorities are protected, even as the culture reflects the Jewish majority. And like the U.S., the Israeli electorate has become very polarized. Many Israelis have not yet come to terms that diversity is a good thing. But even with that, they keep having democratic elections. Israel's democracy is working. And one day after they keep voting and voting, they will find a way to unite together in a common cause. I share these thoughts in celebration of Israel's 73rd birthday. We truly have much to celebrate about Israel. We are proud supporters of Israel. And I personally, and I think many of us, cannot wait to get back on that plane to go visit. But I also share these, these thoughts in response to Rabbi Alyssa Wise, a self-identified anti-Zionist rabbi who recently left a leadership position at Jewish Voices for Peace. JVP views Israel as the enemy and does not think there should be a Zionist Jewish state. Upon leaving JVP and taking a leave from the active rabbinate, Rise Whites about feeling disillusioned about her failed attempts to build a so-called thriving anti-Zionist Judaism. First, I'll let us observe that any endeavor that defies itself as anti-anything is likely subject to fail. These endeavors by nature are reactive and don't lead to positive culture. And secondly, I would say without meanness, that I am contented by her failure to create a Judaism ideologically hostile to Israel. Diversity is good, pluralism is good, and yet cultures need boundary to help keep their definition. History, both past and recent, demonstrate the need for all forms of Judaism to be Zionist. We suffered too long without Israel, and these 73 years, have demonstrated how good Israel is for the Jews, for Jewish culture, and yes, the world. Wise talks about a thriving diaspora Judaism. We should leave the Middle East to Palestinians alone, she says. Rabbi Wise, a Jew no less, is fulfilling Eisenhower's prediction that people will forget the Shoah. Never again will there be a Shoah, and never again will we allow Jewish sovereignty to falter? The Jewish world in Israel will not rest on its laurels. The dream of universal peace, living together with our diverse neighbors and celebrating our diversity is still very much alive. Herzl taught us, Im tirtsu aimzo agada. If you will it, it is not a dream. So my prayer for Israel on her 73rd birthday is that we reunite as Jews and Israelis, reduce our polarization, and recommit ourselves to the fulfilled dream, which is Am Yisrael the Medinat Yisrael, the nation of Israel and the sovereign state of Israel. Wishing all of us a Chag HaAtzma'ut Sameach, a happy Israeli Independence Day this Wednesday night and Thursday. I